everyone. A very warm welcome to today's webinar. I'm glad to see all of you here. And uh, today is a very, very special webinar. It's not a regular product training webinar that you see me in. Uh, today, we are launching our very own uh, NHT Global Knowledge Series. And um, I'm very proud to launch this because I've been behind this for a long, long time now. And we are finally up with a plan and we are launching it today. And uh, the reason we have chosen today's day is because today is World Heart Day. And uh, on the occasion of World Heart Day, we've chosen to launch the NHT Global Knowledge Series. Also um, tell you about World Heart Day and how does the entire thing go about. And to do that, we um, have a very, very special uh, guest amongst us, which uh, I'll be introducing in a while's time to uh, take ahead the webinar. So I'm sure all of you must have seen this uh, artwork all over your WhatsApp, email, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. So this is the NHT Global Knowledge Series that I was uh, talking about. And uh, today is the episode one of this series, uh, which means that we are going to do a lot of episodes coming forward. And uh, we are doing this uh, across the globe. So if you see the time zones, so we are uh, live across the globe. So it's glad to see so many people here from across the globe celebrating World Heart Day together. So on that note, for people who don't know me, uh, my name is Sakshi Mishra, and I'm the Senior Scientific Officer and Product Expert at NHT Global. And I majorly take care of the product trainings and product registrations and everything around product uh, is what I do at NHT Global. And I have uh, got a chance to meet a lot of you uh, recently in the events that we did. And for the ones I haven't met, I'm really, really looking forward to meet all of you. So on that note, uh, let me uh, officially launch the NHT Global Knowledge Series. So what is NHT Global Knowledge Series? Um, it is basically a bundle of webinars that we will put forward to all of you, wherein we will be inviting esteemed guests from a variety of uh, our uh, various industries, also a lot of academicians. We'll be in inviting people who are actually the pioneer in the field to come and talk about uh, their subject, share their knowledge, give insights to all our dear members and distributors so that they get a chance to uh, you know, understand the entire uh, nutrition, health, and beauty domain much, much better. So in this NHT Global Knowledge Series, uh, we are going to have various episodes wherein we are going to invite a lot of guests who are going to come talk about their forte, share their knowledge with you, and uh, give you everything that you need uh, to be a part of this. So uh, if you are a health enthusiast, if you are a beauty enthusiast, or you are uh, just looking for getting that knowledge, this is the place for you. So grab your seats, be with us till the end of the webinar. Also, because we have a little gift for all people who uh, attend the webinar, and I'm sure you must have seen that while registering in the webinar. So if you've done that, um, be with us till the end so that you uh, also uh, get the knowledge and the gift by the end of the webinar. All right, so on that note, um, we are beginning the episode one today. And like I told you, it is World Heart Day today. So 29th of September uh, is celebrated as World Heart Day across the globe. And the major reason to do this is to increase public awareness about all the heart-related diseases, which we call cardiovascular diseases. So there is a lot of cardiovascular diseases that's happening across the globe. And uh, it is basically the major, major reason that uh, the global death toll is impacted because of this. And we celebrate World Heart Day to make sure that there's some public awareness about what to do to prevent such kind of diseases. What is the impact that such diseases make? And how can you take care of your heart uh, and your heart health 
so you are uh, not even dealing with these diseases so that is why we celebrate world heart day and the theme of this year theme of 2023 is use heart no heart and the reason we have put a little heart emoji there is because we are talking about heart emojis now the entire world is uh, so much about virtual communication which we, we use so many of emoticons in our day to day life that's the reason the world ha heart federation has come up with this theme wherein use more of heart emojis and know your heart better so that you can take care of your heart prevent heart diseases and uh, know the entire domain of heart health right so that's the theme of 2023 and that's why we are talking about world heart day today all right so on that note before we go ahead i would like to ask all of you about a question that is what according to you is the number one cause of death worldwide if you see there's a poll in front of you there are four options cardiovascular disease respiratory disease cancer and diabetes you can mark your answer and we will shortly see that what do you uh, really know about it and whether that's the right answer so all of you can quickly select the right answer that you think is the number one cause of death worldwide all right so we have the poll uh, results and amazing so 67% of people have said cardiovascular disease is the number one uh, cause of death followed by 17% who say cancer 13% who say diabetes and 3% who say respiratory disease so you people are absolutely correct the number one cause of um, you know death worldwide is actually uh, the cardiovascular diseases so cardiovascular disease is the disease that is causing the number one uh, cause of death globally and that's the reason it's a problem it's a concern that we have to address as a community together and make sure that we know about the whereabouts of world heart uh, day and that's the reason we are celebrating world heart day so that we can share some awareness give you some tips and tricks to take care of your heart and uh, be vigilant when it comes to your heart health all right thank you so much for sharing your opinion on this poll moving forward i am a uh, really really happy to uh, invite the guest speaker tonight so um, the guest speaker tonight is miss vibha hasija and she is the uh, head of department of the food nutrition and dietetics department in nirmala niketan mumbai university she is a strong strong believer in the power of preventive and therapeutic nutrition and the role of holistic healing with 25 years of academic and research guidance experience with national and international publications she is the pioneer in the field of nutrition she has received a lot of awards and recognition has has been received with projects guided with national quality award for innovation in clinical nutrition from iapn she is also the founder and partner at nutritionwithvibha.com and she is a member of very reputed uh, national registration board indian dietetic association and a member of the executive committee in the iapn mumbai chapter her key area of interest are in clinical nutrition preventive and holistic management of health nutrition education communication and the list just goes on i'm also very very proud to introduce as a guest speaker because she has been my mentor she has been my guide in the in my college days and i am extremely happy to have her as our guest speaker today on board so uh, welcome vibha ma'am and we are really really happy to have you here thank you so much sakshi for those kind words and i'm so happy to be here with you all on nhd global and i think you're doing fabulous work with a wonderful range of products uh, educating and empowering your group and that's i think the crux of you know making a positive change in behavior and wish each one of you a very happy uh, world heart uh, day and let's take this forward in a positive way and look after our health very well glad to be here
Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. On that note, uh, I would like to uh, ask you a couple of questions around World Heart Day and what is your opinion on that so that our audience gauges uh, that how can they prevent heart diseases and what can they do about it, especially when it comes in the field of nutrition and preventive health care. So to start with, I would want to ask you that, uh, ma'am, you've been in the field for quite a while now. What inspired you to get started in this field? Well, uh, Sakshi, like Hippocrates said 3,000 plus years ago, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. And I think he got it absolutely right so many you know, centuries ago that uh, what we are, what we eat and uh, our cells become what we put in. Uh, there are two ways to look at, uh, you know, how how our health is. One is if we are looking at from a lesser evolved way, where we think our food dogs in the mouth or in the stomach. So we are about taste and, you know, whether our hunger is filled or not. Whereas if we go deeper, what everyone has to realize is those molecules are absorbed. It is taken to the cells and it becomes part of each and every cell at the level of the DNA. That is how much food influences us. And food and lifestyle are the only two things which can actually prevent uh, diseases because medicines are great. We go to the doctors and we take medicines when the disease has already occurred. But when we want to prevent and be in good health and be in vigor and be in youth and the best of our abilities, it is nutrition and lifestyle. And I think that is a crux of why uh, me and so many others like me are in the field, because there is a power to make a difference right from the fetus to the older person. I think that's the reason why nutrition is the field of choice. And I am glad that so many of you are associated with nutrition because this is where the difference in health can happen. Uh, we do not have enough dietitians to reach all over India. We have very few dietitians. Our population is 1.4 billion. And you know, each of us, when we become an ambassador of good nutrition and good lifestyle, that's when the change will happen. Definitely. Thank you so much for that uh, answer, ma'am. And that's probably one reason why I chose nutrition a couple of years back. And I'm so, so happy and glad to be in this field associated with this entire, uh, you know, heart, uh, sorry, health and uh, nutrition field, which uh, brings me to the next question. What, according to you, ma'am, are some of the most common heart problems that people are facing today? And what do you think is the major cause? So, uh, see, the heart is a muscle and uh, it's meant to work and it's meant to work till we uh, die. The issue is that the, the heart muscle doesn't function as well in our younger days as compared to earlier when it used to fail at a later age. The issue is that the disease is happening younger. The disease is happening in much earlier than what it is supposed to be because all of us, we have a lifespan and the heart will stop at one point of time, but it should not get diseased earlier. So in a very easy way, if you look at the heart disease, we can kind of classify it into something which is happening over a period of our life, over many years and decades, which then culminates into a, a disease. So if we look, it's as simple as the extra weight we carry, especially uh, in around the abdomen, because it is triggering out so many molecules which cause uh, heart disease. So the weight that we carry in the abdo around the abdomen, the wrong lifestyle choices that we make, sitting, not exercising, smoking, tobacco, uh, and the wrong nutrition that we take, uh, which, which we are not mindful about, we are not aware of. So this is kind of driving our metabolism, wherein our arteries are slowly getting clogged by substances. For example, one aspect of cholesterol, uh, and which is kind of, uh, you know, ignited, the deposition becomes more when we are choosing wrong food and our oxidation, that is the pollution that we are exposed to external and internal is high. And this drives the clogging of the arteries, the arteries become narrower. And therefore, the poor heart muscle, which I mean, really kudos to the heart muscle because it doesn't have a single moment's rest and it should not have. It's 24 7 working and how little we think of it. Right. 
we don't think of the work that the heart is doing and we allow this heart to receive lesser and lesser blood supply because of the clogging of the arteries. And Correct. that is when after a point of time that uh, the, the, the direction is could be taking two ways. We see an acute incidence. The acute incidence is the heart is so tired that it completely stops because ultimately it's a muscle. It's not getting the oxygen. It's not getting the blood supply. It stops, which we call as a heart attack, which of course some people recover from. Or we see that the muscle slowly over a period of time gets damaged. Mm -hmm. And then we see the incidence of heart disease, which is what we call as cardiac failure. So when we see a heart disease or when we see a heart attack or when we see heart failure in somebody who is a 40 or a 50 year old, uh, it has not started then at all. It has started much, much earlier and the person was completely unaware and over decades it has grown to the place where the heart fails. Uh, this is quite heartening, if I may use that pun, because uh, it just tells us there is so much scope that we have to take care of our heart. Meaning if you're looking at the history of the heart disease being 20 years before, how much possibility we have to prevent it. And that's very good information because it gives us strength and courage and, uh, and a direction on what we need to do. So we're right. looking at heart disease, which is mainly atherosclerosis, which is a clogging of the arteries, which leads to the end result, a heart attack or a cardiac failure. However, I must add two more things. Uh, we there is a there is a capacity, you know, there's a possibility of a stroke which happens. The issue is which it's not it is not exactly cardiovascular. It's not to do with the heart, but it is to do with the uh, arteries. There is a clot somewhere which blocks the brain or the, there's very high blood pressure and it causes a hemorrhage and the brain is affected or there can be clot in the peripheral tissues, that is the leg. Okay, for example, whether that and that clot can travel anywhere, cause a stroke or cause a heart attack. So when we look at obesity, when we look at blood uh, lipids, uh, fat in the blood being high, and we look at high blood pressure uh, and the diabetes which concurrently occurs, these are you know mm -hmm. coming together as absolutely a kind of creating a volcano where the atherosclerosis proceeds, the clogging of the arteries proceeds, and the end result 10 years, 15 years, 20 years later is a heart attack or a cardiac failure. Right, right. I get that. And uh, like you said, ma'am, uh, since this is something that is preventable and there's so much scope that people can take care right in the beginning. So these days we see people uh, as young as 20, 22, 23 years getting heart attack. So that's clearly because they haven't taken any steps to prevent it and they have been very lenient with their lifestyle. So on that note, I would like to ask you that if individuals want to take care of their heart health, what are some simple dietary and lifestyle changes that they can make to their day-to-day -day routine so that they can improve their heart health and not get into this entire vicious cycle that we just spoke about? Correct. See, uh, I believe that every behavior change, what we want to do, starts in the mind. Without uh, bringing it into our span of attention and without paying attention to it and letting it process through the mind, the change will not happen. So uh, I think the first thing that we took a look at over here is to be very mindful of how we are living and how what are our food choices and what are our lifestyle choices. So we start from there. We are so busy in life that we really don't pay a lot of attention to what we are, how we live and what are, how we nourish our body. We are not really thinking about it. So the first change starts there, being mindful of what we need to do and how we can rever our body and nourish our body and nourish our heart in the, at the same time. So we look at two uh, aspects. One is the food choices and the second is lifestyle choices. So with regards to food choice, I think I, if I may just look at five things that you can start doing immediately is uh, first eating wholesome foods. So uh, when and being mindful about it. So when you have a choice between a refined bread versus a better grain, that is a, a cereal grain or a millet grain, we choose consciously the 
whole grain rather than the refined because what happens is when we are putting the food through a machine and processing it there is a lot of loss of small amounts of nutrients vitamins and minerals which are all protective for us so the first thing is how what is it that we're choosing mindfully we choose non-processed second thing is nature has given us so much goodness in terms of vegetables and fruit because apart from the you know nutrients it gives the vitamins and minerals it gives it's got beautiful chemicals which are actually decreasing the atherosclerosis in our body it decreases the inflammation it decreases the incidence of disease so when we are consciously choosing vegetables and fruit and incorporating into a diet i'm not talking of the you know the processed vegetable like fries or i'm not talking of refined fruit juices but whole fruits and whole vegetables when we start eating it we will see that difference where our body is being nourished taken care of and the incidence will slowly uh, decrease the third thing we can look at is um, so using foods which have a particular the right kind of fat uh, we concentrate on fat mostly in terms of quantity we say nahi fat nahi khana chahiye almost everybody i know is on a you know is trying to keep the fat uh, intake low Right. but it's not about the quantity of fat it is what is the oil that we are choosing so we choose the right oil uh, for example a rice bran or a mustard oil or a soya bean oil or an olive oil if you can you know it's it's right to come to your house uh, those are the oils that we choose and we choose fat which uh, which is there in foods in invisible form which is a correct fat for example if i'm going to have a lot of red meat which has got fat in it but that fat is not the fat which is going to protect the heart that fat is going to harm the heart whereas if i use a nut for example almonds or walnuts the kind of fat which is there is heart healthy it protects the heart so i'm going to choose right that what if i'm using a food which has fat in it uh, which kind so nuts are really something which is good and beneficial because it has good fat another fat we absolutely have to keep at bay or absolutely avoid is the trans fats which is there in a lot of processed foods that we take which is um, you know not packed well or i should say not standardized doesn't have a licensing there the trans fats that we say so in the bakery goods in highly fried foods those will go to the body and clog the arteries uh, faster it is going to increase the cholesterol levels so trans fats is something we come kind of keep uh, aside then there is one very the biggest kept secret i will want to say in a number of decades a certain fat called as omega 3 uh, kind of fatty acids omega 3 fatty acids why i say this is a biggest secret is the research has been going on since 1950s and 1960s 70s there that we have the research but still we do not find i mean the scientists talk about it it's there in the journals it's there in the textbooks but we are not seeing this information come to the table of a per- coming to the plate of a person it's so sad okay because it's so simple that if we just choose foods which have omega 3 it will reduce the dis- incidence of heart disease but somehow we have missed that so choosing omega 3 rich foods for example walnuts for example flax seeds or fish for that matter certain kind of fish fatty fish for that matter salmon for example are the wa- way to uh, take care of the right kind of fat so uh, so we look at you know these three aspects uh, of food uh, from how we from through nutrition we can take care and let's look at the lifestyle also one is a positive mindset we have to be happy optimism feeling good being clean of the spirit uh, and having a positive attitude goes a very long way in good health sleeping well for 8 hours 7 to 8 hours exercising uh, keeping the substances low for example tobacco alcohol um, smoking these are all going to you know uh, add on to our um, uh, incidence of heart disease so these are things that we have to keep low so i think these these few five simple things if we start this is a very good start for us to you know walk towards the path of heart health
Right, right. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that uh, brief uh, about what you can do to take care of your heart health. So just to summarize, start having whole grains instead of having refined foods. Start having a lot of fruits and vegetables in your day-to-day -day life so that make sure your plate is as colorful as possible. So do that. Number three, do not avoid fats, but take good care of having good quality of fat. For example, having omega-3 in your plate is a very, very good option. Take care of your lifestyle. Do not, uh, you know, have a lot of alcohol and smoking consumption. Also, make sure that you have good sleep. So these are the five things that you can take care. And uh, if you are doing all of this already, great. You are uh, taking care of your future self. But if you're not doing that, make sure that you start doing that. And you will thank yourself uh, once you go ahead in life. You'll thank yourself for that. All right. So on that note, moving on to the next question, ma'am. Are there any specific dietary supplements or vitamins that can improve heart health uh, in particular? Of course, there are. So, um, the, see, as humans, you know, when we evolve, uh, we have started, we use a lot of ways to get nutrition into our system. So we started cooking, right? We started agriculture. we started processing industries but now it's come a time that we want to extract certain nutrients from the foods which are available and concentrate it so that it is giving us health benefits so at the outset i want to tell everyone here that supplements uh, so of course we believe that food is a first choice it's always food first but when uh, the requirement is more uh, for a particular nutrient which a food cannot give uh, or when the person is not able to take the food that is required, then of course you can look at using supplements. So it's, it's not something which is like a chemical or something which you have to look at it like that. It's artificial. Uh, it may be derived and manufactured, but it is an asset that we can use. However, use it under the guidance of a nutritionist uh, for the best possible results so that you are not harming yourself. So, uh, see, one thing that happens in the body, uh, which will predispose a person to a heart disease is when uh, uh, the oxidation or uh, let me say that oxidants are sort of chemicals in the body, which are like terrorists. Okay, they're just waiting to attack cells. So when this kind of terrorist molecules, okay, or oxidants increase uh, in our body, we have to take, a, we have to send the police in. Okay, so that is the antioxidants. So now we can get antioxidants from fruit and vegetables, grains, whole foods, yes. But sometimes we need a little bit more. And that is when you may want to use supplements. So I will say that anybody who has got high cholesterol levels uh, or is got, uh, you know, maybe has suffering from hypertension or uh, is stressed. Okay, there are two kinds of stress. Physiological stress, that is a disease or emotional stress also. So you may want to consider taking one multivitamin, multimineral as a copper. Of course, talk to your dietitian, talk to your uh, uh, doctor to, uh, you know, get a, a touch point on whether that's right for you. But one multivitamin, multimineral cover will help especially on those days for busy people when you are um, not able to take the nutrition from food as required, then uh, another very good supplement to use is vitamin C supplement. And this we recommend to everyone who is under a preventive program also. Of course, you get it from food and eat eat well. There is no compromise on eating. So it's never saying that, okay, don't eat, it's fine, but take your supplements. No, eat well, but supplement it or add on with some vitamin c and the third supplement from prevention point of view which i can look at is omega-3 supplement uh, which is the right kind of fat in an active form which is available which we may not get from the diet however i want to caution that uh, you know anybody who is already suffering from a heart condition and is taking uh, maybe a blood thinners or so they have to be very cautious about omega-3 so therefore again please take your dietitian's guidance here uh, so that you're taking the right supplement but these are the supplements which are available uh, of course uh, you 
may also want to look at supplements like curcumin, which is an extract of turmeric. So we all know how healthy wala dood is good. You know, our grandmoms usually tell us that it actually is good. So either we use turmeric supplement or we use its extract, this curcumin supplement. Uh, there's green tea, which is good. Not as an extract. I wouldn't ex uh, recommend green tea extract, but green tea as such as supplementing your diet. And in case of cardiac failure, uh, we may look at, uh, you know, special supplements like uh, glutathione or coenzyme Q10, uh, CoQ10. These are specific supplements, which of course uh, is not to be looked at from prevention point of view, but it's to be looked at when the disease is there. So yes, we do take help of this wonderful nutraceutical industry, which is giving us fantastic products to better our health, understanding that, yeah, food is a basic thing. We don't compromise there, but we add on because we all want to be living longer with full vigor, agility, and living younger as many years as we have. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that information. I hope all of you are making your notes because your this information is gold. You are not going to get this uh, very soon from anywhere else. So I hope you're making your notes and uh, keep it handy. Also, uh, at this point, I would like to tell all of you, if you have any questions, you can park it at the Q&A section that you see down. You can put your questions there. Towards the end of the session, I'll be picking up some questions from there. And if we have time, ma'am will answer that as well. Coming on to my uh, next question, ma'am. Uh, how does physical activity play a role in heart health? And how can individuals incorporate exercise into their very busy daily routine? Yeah, Sakshi, that is a, uh, you know, that's the biggest issue, I think, for us in our life Absolutely. to exercise and to increase. So, you know, uh, let's look at, let's break that down into a little simpler way. Uh, we look at two things. One is physical activity and the other is exercise. Now, the reason why we all have to exercise is because we are not physically active. Okay, the moment we are physically active, where is the need for exercising? Right. So, for example, if I'm going to look at somebody who is work for eight hours a day involves walking and standing and roaming about, he's already physically active. He need not really exercise 30 minutes a day, 40 minutes a day. But a person who is sitting for a long period of time, eight hours sitting, and it's so unnatural because our body is not meant to sit for eight hours we are we are meant to walk and move around so somebody who's sitting for eight hours they have to put in some time for exercising so this is one checklist for you all uh you know to look at if we are mindful enough that every half an hour every one hour we are able to get up and walk uh, we are able to do things for ourselves. Like sometimes even getting up and putting on the fan, we like somebody else to do that for us. We want to kind of sit and we have assistance to do everything. But consciously and mindfully, if we are able to better the physical activity and moving around more, uh, it's great. Think about, you know, flexing your wrist and flexing your ankles and some small leg raises, chair exercises. You can go online and see a lot of chair yoga that you can do. Uh, standing on your toes, you know, every half an hour, every one hour, if you're able to do a little bit of this exercise, it's great. I also suggest something called as smart sitting which will better your physical activity because, uh, you know, when we slouch, our muscles are very relaxed, okay? And it doesn't use up enough energy. But suppose we're sitting straighter, and I'm sure everyone must have told you when you were young, see the bato, you know, sit straight without yeah. telling us a reason why. But when we hold our spine straight, our muscles are engaged and therefore is consuming a little bit more energy and it's great for the posture. So uh, I think all of us can just experience it. Just sit up straight with your shoulders Absolutely. back, a little chest raised, you know, abdomen tucked in and pelvis tight and sit like that. It looks good also. You look good, you know, with that posture. And it's smart sitting because you're engaging your muscles. So we look at how to improve our daily physical activity uh, on in the regular basis. And then we look at exercise. So exercise and physical activity is being kind to our heart. Because what happens is when we exercise and when we are active, our blood vessels increase in size. So the heart is very happy because it's getting so much of 
blood is getting so much of oxygen and it releases some chemicals which actually decrease the incidence of heart disease. So uh, in two ways, one, it makes us happy and when we are less stressed and when we are happy, heart disease is lesser. And the second thing is it actually causes a biochemical reaction by which blood pressure is maintained, blood pressure reduces. And if we are consistent with exercise, then weight reduces. And when the weight is off, the strain on the heart is off, blood pressure is less, uh, diabetes incidence is less, and the heart is happier. So if we want to be kind to our hearts, then we better our physical activity and we make time for exercise and I think this is just a routine that we set you know when we put a daily routine what is most priority for us the priority for us is good sleep so when you fix your routine you know you first put your sleep there how am I getting seven hours of sleep you fix that you fix what am I doing for myself for my health so that I'm young for a longer period of time. So you fix your 30 minutes of exercise or whatever else in a walk, where you're going to get it done and then work around everything else around that. So that right. we are not missing. So otherwise what we think is calm, sabse important hai. work is most important. Sleep is last on our list. Exercise is last on our list if we get time. Let's work it the other way around so that it is definitely on your schedule and you are able to, uh, you know, continue with physical activity and exercise so being kind to the heart is having having exercising and having good physical activity absolutely absolutely that's that's so true like uh, you know a lot of finance people say this that once you get your salary first you should invest and then spend <laughs> So I think here we should first invest on our health, start exercising, having a nice healthy diet, do some kind of physical activity. And once all of that is done, then we should probably put our si uh, hours aside to work and get that money. Because yes, what will we do with that said, money? Sachi. Beautifully said. <laughs> Yeah, because what, what will we do with that money if we don't have the right health? Health is actually the wealth that all of we need at, at this point in time. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing all that beautiful information. I have made my share of notes and I'm sure, I'm sure all of you are also noting down your stuff. And uh, lastly, before we close this interview, I have my last question to you, ma'am. We have heard of your initiative, nutritionwithvibha.com. So uh, we would love to know about it. And can you share something about that with our audience so that they can get a brief and they can also check you out? Thank you. Uh, see, when I've been in this field for 25 years and uh, been a, an academician and a practitioner both for some time. And what I have realized over a period of time is that uh, when people are, uh, you know, educated and empowered, that is when the health change happens. And that nutrition is a sustainable path to get positive health. It is nutrition. So with that thought in mind, what what uh, I work with Dr. Mitra, who's my who's been my colleague and my uh, business head, which is who's uh, Wilfred Fernandez. So the three of us have put this together because what we realized is that unless uh, you know we talk about India. Uh, being the leader for diabetes and pre-diabetes and heart disease and you know we are worried about that but then what are we doing for the community so we said this is uh, we have we, if you have to change something the change is because will happen only with education so our primary goal is education and empowerment and we have various programs you can look at our website nutritionwithvipa.com because we we work with communities we work with uh, individuals for consultations and personalized health coachings and we have put together a self empowerment tool uh, for sports it is ready and the rest is all coming up because we feel that you know when people have a way to learn on their own and digital medium is beautiful so when people have a way to learn on their own and they get empowered the change will happen so we are trying to change things inside out currently there's a lot of free content we have a, a blog which uh, you know is about 50 uh, plus articles are there of various aspects where uh, you know you can read and you can learn and you can change we have some recipes there and we have our paid services also where people can you know engage with us and go ahead for a longer period of time because a change actually happens inside out so the website is nutritionwithvipa.com and uh, you can email us, us at nutritionwithvipa at gmail.com for whatever queries that you have and we'll be happy to assist you 
uh, with it. All right, all right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we have shared the link to uh, the website on the chat box. So you can access it from your chat box. And uh, if you have any queries, you can reach out to ma'am there. On that note, thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing uh, the valuable information with all of us. And um, I would like to take the session ahead and I'd request you to be there with us for another 10, 15 minutes to answer the questions towards the end of the session. Sure. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So on that note, um, I would like to take the show ahead and I would like to talk to you a little bit about uh, the product that we have at NHT Global called the Omega-3 Essential Fatty Acids. The reason uh, I'm talking about this product, I'm sure all of you know, uh, we just heard Vibha Ma'am talking about how important Omega-3 is for our heart health and how it's a magic ingredient that can help you prevent any kind of heart-related disease disease later on in life. And uh, like ma'am said, omega-3 is something that you can consume via your diet, uh, like some sources are walnuts, flax seeds, or uh, your fatty fish is what you can get uh, in your diet. But if that is not the case, and if you are not able to meet your dietary requirements, then this is the product for you. Omega-3 three essential fatty acids that's brought to you by uh, NHT Global is very, very different from a regular omega-3 capsule that you will find on the market. The reason are three reasons that you see on the screen. Number one, it is highly pure. The reason we say it's highly pure because the fish oil used in the omega-3 soft gel that we sell at NHT Global is from the Norway fishes and it is of very, very high quality. The reason being that we use the small fishes, we use the mackerel, anchovies, etc., which have a very, very good quality of omega-3 as compared to the large fishes. And that is, uh, you know, given to you in the omega-3 soft gel, making it highly pure and very safe to consume. Also, it is very, very potent. When I say it's very, very potent, I mean that you do not have to consume a lot of soft gels to meet your requirement. Usually, when you go uh, and consume an omega-3 capsule, you have to go ahead and consume, say, four, five, six capsules a day to reach your requirement. That is not the case here. Just one serving of omega-3 gives you your daily requirement of EPA and DHA, which is, um, you know, uh, extra extraordinary so that we don't want you to keep popping pills all the time and that's the reason we have made the omega-3 soft gel high is the taste because it's made of fish the taste is usually not that great uh, we get that fishy after repeat which we do not uh, enjoy a lot of times. Also, this uh, supplement is also for children and children are very finicky with taste. That's the reason we have added citrus flavor to our omega-3 capsule. So you will not get any kind of burps, etc. after omega, after consuming omega-3. You will not have the fishy after repeat that you would otherwise get when you consume a regular omega-3 capsule. So this makes the product very, very different. It's superior purity, superior potency, and it's superior taste. There are a lot of ingredients to mention a few. It has refined and concentrated omega-3 fish oil, which comes from the small fishes. Like I told you, it comes from mackerel, anchovies, etc. Also, it has an antioxidant blend. We just saw how important is antioxidants for our overall well-being, right? It is the pullis to our cells. You know, it takes care of any kind of problems, any kind of oxidative stress your body has. The uh, antioxidant blend can actually help you with that. And of course, it has the natural citrus flavor to take care of the palatability that is usually a problem with omega-3. So these are all the number one ingredients that are present. Also coming to benefits, it has a lot of benefits. I'm sure by now you know that it is the number one supplement when it comes to cardiac health, when it comes to any kind of heart-related problems and its prevention. Omega-3 is something that will be prescribed to you by your doctor or your dietitian. And that is something that you should consider so you do not get into the vicious cycle of heart-related problems. It also helps you with your brain health. EPA and DHA are two essential fat 
fatty acids that really really help in cognitive development and uh, that's why uh, you know a lot of people uh, cons you know let their children also consume uh, omega 3 so that it can help in their cognitive development and overall brain development it is a very very good supplement for your joint health also because your joints are uh, something that need essential fatty acid to work properly so if you are somebody who is dealing with joint discomfort joint immobility or you know sitting standing if you have a problem probably you should check if you need a omega 3 supplement also it's great if you want to lose weight if you want a glowing skin this is something that can help you there as well and of course it's great for your vision and ocular health so you see the product is very very versatile there are so many things it can be used for depending on what is your requirement and depending on what you want to use it for so these are all the benefits that the product has to offer how do you consume it there uh, it's for adults and children adults can consume two soap gels daily preferably 10 minutes before a meal is what is recommended two soap gels daily is what is recommended for adults that's one serving and for children above the age of 4 years one soft gel daily can be consumed by uh, the children so that is recommended having said that if you are pregnant lactating or you have any kind of a uh, long term standing disease you should always first check with your nutritionist dietitian or your doctor before consuming any kind of supplements all right so um, that brings me to another question for all of you how many of you are already consuming omega 3 and have seen the difference for yourself you have three options in on your screen yes i consume it and i love it not yet i'm thinking to start and no it's not for me what do you think is the apt answer for all of you there's no right or wrong answer here you can uh, just pick up what you think is right you can just select what you think is right all right so 50% of people are saying not yet i'm thinking to start 33% are saying yes i consume and i love it and 18% are saying no not for me great so that means that 50% of you which is like a, a, a huge huge number are still in the uh, you know uh, confused state in the prep phase whether you should consume it or not and usually most of us lie in this phase so if you are in this phase and if you need any uh, you know guidance about whether the supplement is right for you or not please feel free to connect with me and i can help you out with that or else if you um, are uh, you know in uh, having some kind of a disease and you want a reference from your doctor you can always take the product to your doctor and let the doctor recommend you uh, however omega 3 supplements are one of the favorite supplements that nutritionist and doctor recommend for people who have a history of heart disease in their family so on that note uh, if you are already consuming omega 3 great if not i have something for all of you so um, we have a offer running uh, right now so which gives you a pack of two omega 3 soft gels which would otherwise cause you uh, cost you about 9 uh, and a half 1000 rupees in just 4800 rupees you are getting this pack of two omega 3 soft gels so um, if you are already not consuming is this is the time and this is the price uh, which is the best available price for all of you Another way you can get your hands on omega 3 is the beautiful essential trio pack that we have in our back office. The essential trio has omega 3, it has premium noni juice and it has triotene protein powder. These are the three best products of NHT Global India. We've combined it and made a pack out of it in the best best available price. That is uh, the if you buy these products separately it will cost you about 17 and a half thousand but if you buy this pack it will cost you somewhere about a uh, 10000 rupees which is a great great way to get your hands on omega 3 last but not the least you can get your hands on omega 3 via our very very new pack called the joint care plus this pack is specially made for joint health so if you are struggling with joint related problems this is the pack for you which gives you two units of omega 3 
three units of restored silver and two units of glucosamine. All of these products work wonderfully to take care of your joint health. And this pack is available to you, which would otherwise cost you about 31 and a half thousand rupees. The price that you get it right now is 17,900 rupees, which is the best way to get your hands on to all of these beautiful products. Uh, and this pack is available in your back office. All right, so if you want to get hands on on any of this, please get in touch with who invited you here, or you can get in touch with me and I can help you out. All right, so on that note, we come towards the end. And before that, I would like to open the session for Q&A. So we have a couple of questions in the chat box and the question and answer box. All right, so, okay, ma'am. So we have a lot of questions. Okay, one question that I have, a lot of people are asking this, is I have high uh, cholesterol levels and I'm really worried about that. Are there any tips to control my cholesterol levels? Of course, there are. And uh, cholesterol level is something that we have to be worried about also because that can predispose a person uh, to heart disease. So the first thing is, you know, look at the amount of oil you're taking uh, and take the right amount. I would suggest if anybody is having high cholesterol levels, do take one consultation with a nutritionist. Uh, so look at the amount of oil that you're using. Second is, what is the oil of cho choice? Which oil are you using? Uh, let it be a rice bran or a soya bean oil or a groundnut oil or an olive oil. These are the best choices. Uh, add an omega-3, uh, either from food or if the cholesterol is high, you can use a supplement also. Um, this is regarding the fact, avoid the trans fats. Eat healthy, eat less processed, eat uh, whole grains. Uh, one very important thing is to add vegetables uh, to every meal because what one of the things that vegetables do is it binds with the cholesterol and excretes it out. So having salads and having vegetables, uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner, there has to be a vegetable component, the fiber part of it. Also, when you take whole grains, the fiber is high. Okay, so have enough of fiber uh, in the uh, in the uh, meals uh, you can use uh, you know whole cereals whole pulses you know, that will really help fruit like guava is very good even banana is fine uh, so multiple you know whole uh, foods when you take and also with nuts this will help uh, reduce the cholesterol also very important just keep trying go up in for some weight loss physical activity exercise start that after you check with the doctor first take a uh, fitness certificate from the doctor look at your blood pressure also because many people when they have high cholesterol the blood pressure is also high so go to a physician take a fitness certificate start an exercise program don't have too much of refined sodas and soft drinks and sugar and sweets keep that low uh, and you know and you you can also look at using some vitamin c uh, either from foods like citrus fruits, guava uh, are great source of vitamin C. Amla is a very good source or starting with a vitamin C supplement, which will bring the cholesterol down. Very important. I think Sakshi will next do something on gut health, I'm sure, because, you know, when we keep our gut healthy, uh, there is, and, you know, we are, we are nourishing the intestine with good foods and good lifestyle and reduce stress. Uh, it will definitely better the way cholesterol is being metabolized. We have bacteria in the gut, which actually helps metabolizing the cholesterol in a positive way. So uh, that's another thing that we look at. So yeah, eat well, eat mindful, keep the things that I have just said in place, start exercising, be less stressed, have positive attitude, uh, take a few supplements uh, which are required uh, along with a very good diet program. And um, I think we can manage the cholesterol, but I would suggest a consultation uh, with a nutritionist at least once uh, to kind of kickstart you on the route uh, which has to be uh, taken forward. Uh, of course, uh, if the cholesterol, see the first touch point, what even American Heart Guidelines tell us is the first touch point is to change the diet. We first change the diet, we change the lifestyle, and still if their cholesterol is high, we may have to use some medications, which you can get in touch with your doctor. But the first line of treatment is not a medicine. The first line of treatment is nutrition and good lifestyle. And then if the cholesterol is high, we may take 
may we may require medications. So uh, I just have one thing to say here that you know we do have a couple of blogs, especially on cholesterol reduction at nutritionviva.com. You can please subscribe to it because we keep sending you information on various aspects of health. And you write into us, we will try and address it to a blog. So some of the questions that you have asked here, you are most welcome to write into us, which can be addressed through a blog and which will help you uh, take care of your health. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that. I hope that has answered your question. Um, we have a lot of questions, but since we don't have the time right now, I'm going to end this with one last question that I see. Uh, how do I know that I'm at risk of heart disease? Is there a way to identify that? Wow. So I think this is a very relevant uh, very, question very. And, uh, and I think a lot of people should know about this because uh, when it comes to heart attacks, etc., people don't even know why that's occurring. So is there a way to identify the risk that people have, if, if at all they have? So I would ask this last question to you, ma'am. Whoever has asked us this question, it's, it's a lovely question. And I think um, the most relevant question to end this webinar, actually. So I will suggest that anybody who has got a family history of uh, diabetes or hypertension, there's high blood pressure or high cholesterol or heart disease. If uh, not just heart disease, even stroke for that matter, if it is in the family, if it is there, if it has been uh, seen in your parents or grandparents or siblings, that is a risk factor. OK, by the way, just being in the Southeast Asian region is a risk factor, OK, because we are all genetically prone towards heart disease because of the way our metabolism is. So I think that all of us are having some genetic risk, definitely. But yeah, family history, if it is there, that's a that's a red flag and uh, which means that we need to take precautions there. Or if there is not a family history, but if there is uh, abdominal obesity uh, and uh, you know, get your body composition done and see what is a visceral fat, how much of fat is there in the around the organs, and that which will tell which abdominal obesity will tell us. Uh, or if there is high blood pressure, or if there's high cholesterol, or if blood sugars are high, uh, these are risk factors. Yes, for heart disease. Okay, so we we have to start doing what it takes to reduce the risk. Uh, if you are third, if you are living a very stressed life where uh, you know there's less sleep there's sitting all the time and there's a lot of mental stress then it is a risk factor if you are taking uh addiction there are addictions of tobacco and smoking uh and high consumption of alcohol it is a risk factor if you have not been eating well uh, and not mindful choices not whole grains we've just talked about it it is a risk factor and if uh, you are living in a polluted environment, uh, it is a risk factor because you need more antioxidants, therefore, to take care of your uh, heart health. So if any of this is there, I would suggest, you know, if you go and get an annual checkup or a biannual checkup with the blood parameters, do a stress test, uh, do a blood pressure monitoring and get it all under control and start taking the nutrition program and start taking the whichever relevant supplements as required uh, so that your heart is healthy. Yes, right. extremely important question has been asked in the last. Right. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I, I hope that has answered a lot of your questions. Make sure to, uh, you know, do what you've learned today. So we've learned so much today and I'm sure we've made our notes. Let's start putting it into our day to day practice and reach where uh, where, wherever our health goals wants to take us. On that uh, note, um, I would like to give you the information about the next webinar that's happening and all of you can save the date. So we have the NHT Global India Leaders Meet happening on 6th October at 7 p.m. And we have another training webinar on joint health, which is happening on 13th October at 7 p.m. So make sure you save your dates and um, you have the links in the chat box. So you can just uh, maybe register there and we, we can see you on the other side. 
All right. So on that note, thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us and sparing the time and giving us all the valuable information that you've given. And I'm sure our audience just loved it. And we will want a much, much more of this in the future. So thank you so much. And uh, once again, uh, this was an inaugural session of NHD Global Knowledge Series. So you are uh, the first guest speaker that we had on board. And we are really, really happy to have you here. So and thank you. I'm so most happy to be here and associate with NHT and with you Sakshi and all the beautiful team that you have very eager I know wanting to know a lot more on nutrition so uh, let's maybe associate more and looking forward to it sure sure thank you so much uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, make sure your heart is healthy have a happy happy life have a very good, uh, uh, you know, diet, lifestyle. Make sure you follow us on our Instagram, Facebook handles. You'll see that uh, on your screen right now. It's called NHT Global India. And if you have any doubts, uh, you can get in touch on support.in at the rate nhtglobal.com. And we'll be happy to cater you there. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful evening and see you all in the next webinar. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.